So imagine a world where no matter what happens, you feel deeply rooted and at peace because you know a very powerful truth. And that truth is that everything in life, every circumstance, every situation, every experience is part of you. It's working together for your highest good. When you understand this, when you understand that you are everything, it becomes clear that each challenge, each joy, and each experience serves a greater purpose in your life's journey. So this is a shift, a shift in thinking. We're rethinking. This is a shift in thinking about not denying hardship or pretending like life is perfect when it's not, obviously. Rather, it's about understanding that you're not at the mercy of life's ups and downs. Instead, instead, you're the essence behind all of this. You're creating all of this. And by recognizing that everything outside of you is connected to what's inside of you, what's within, you begin to feel a profound sense of harmony, a sense of resilience, and even empowerment. You are constant. You are the constant in life. You're the constant flow in life. And by seeing the oneness in all things, you open yourself to the experience that every moment is part of the next, is part of a larger more beautiful tapestry is woven from the threads of your own consciousness. So as you live from this particular truth, the big I and not the little me, challenges lose their power over you. They lose the power to disturb you no matter what's happening. And you gain the insight to see everything as part of a grander design all unfolding perfectly for your benefit. So again, this is a rethinking. This is a shift in thinking. We're not pretending. We are not denying. We are shifting the way and we're choosing a perspective. And based on the understanding that all of this comes from within us, we choose to be empowered. I want to talk to you today about uh, nothing outside of you can bother you. Because really, there's nothing outside of you. Everything that you see, whether you understand it or not, is coming from within. Uh, We talk uh, at length about the power of your mind, your uh, imagination, and the power and the importance of meditation. And so we're taking a more uh, empowering stance today on nothing outside of us is going to bother us. We want to begin to shift our minds to think that way. Some of the great thought-voking leaders like uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti said, the ability to observe without evaluating is the highest form of intelligence. Uh, What he means by this is by observing without judgment, we detach from the reactions and the disturbances of our mind, the disturbances of the external forces on our minds. This non-judgmental awareness grounds us in peace, and it aligns us with pure, unbiased, uh, the big I within. Um, Yogananda said, you do not have to acquire anything. You have it already. You have only to know it and to realize it. Uh, Yogananda, of course, taught that peace and strength are inherent within us. And rather than seeking outside for solutions or validation, the journey is actually inward. Discovering the self, this is the only true source of power and tranquility. Nothing outside of you is going to bring you peace. Discovering your true self, your highest self, your connectivity with source is going to be the one thing that's going to bring you peace. Uh, Muji. Muji says that feelings are just visitors. Let them come and let them go. Of course, this is the basis of meditation, letting our thoughts come and go. Muji's teaching reminds us that emotions and external disturbances are always temporary. So by identifying with the deeper, more stable I, that larger part of you, 
Rather than these fleeting emotions and experiences, we remain unaffected by this external stimuli, these external forces, and we remain grounded, grounded in a space of inner peace and of awareness. And then lastly, Brahma Maharashi said, your own self-realization, which is the goal of life, your own self-realization is the greatest service you can render to the world. Uh, Maharashi emphasized that true power and peace come from understanding one's inner self. Beyond thoughts and beyond external circumstances and stimuli and conditions, he taught that by realizing the self, the pure eye, within all suffering and attachments, they dissolve, leaving us grounded, uh, leaving us grounded rather in true awareness and peace. So in this episode, let's talk, let's, let's talk empowerment. Let's talk empowerment. No matter what happens, no matter what takes place in your life, you can see it and you can approach it from a place of awareness, from the big guy and not the little me. Before we get going, I, I want to give you a couple of administrative updates. I thank you guys, as always, for, for joining me here on the podcast. Uh, so many uh, folks have... Um, you know, text, text us each week and say very nice things. Thank you so much. Again, those are going to be up on the website. Thank you and continue to communicate with us. I have a, what I told you I was going to do, I was going to put a, a one link in our show notes from now on, and it's going to have everything on there. So whether you're trying to get to our digital course, which is 31 Days, a New Beginning, uh, it's on there. If you're trying to get to either of our website, the podcast website, the digital marketplace, which sells, you know, our digital downloads, you know, fasting, um, and and uh, there are a couple different digital books on there, so you have to take a look there. Um, and also our our gratitude journal. You may want to take a look at our gratitude journal that's on our podcast website. If you want to go and join us over on uh, Instagram, uh, you can do all of that through that one link. And if you certainly want to communicate with me with the podcast, you can do it through that same link. So right now, when you go to the to the podcast notes, I don't care if you listen to us on the podcast side or if you're watching us on YouTube, it's going to be one link from now on. And it's going to, yeah, it's, it's a link tree. So you just go in, you select what you want, and then bam, you'll you'll be able to uh, interact uh, however you need to in order to, um, you know, uh, network and, and, and talk with us. So thank you for supporting the podcast. We really do appreciate it. Um, let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're talking about not allowing things from the outside to bother us. And this may be obvious given the season that we're in. I don't want to label it or tell you what's going on around right now because you may listen to this a week later, a month later, a year later, maybe in a much better place. So I don't want to remind you what's going on around us in this week and this time period. But it is certainly appropriate topic because so many people are bothered by external circumstance, especially now. And it's important for us to know that um, we have an alternative. We have the ability to come from a more empowered place because we are more, more than likely, uh, more than who we normally believe ourselves to be. And what is happening, a lot of times we have spent so much time with this inward worry and trepidation, and eventually with using our imaginations, uh, not to our benefit, we a lot of times begin to manifest things that, of course, we don't want. We don't want. But of course, if we can do that, then, of course, we can manifest the things that we do. And we're going to talk about some daily practices today that can help you come uh, from an empowered place. I don't care what's going on in your life. It can be divorce. It can be marriage. Because here's the thing, you know, don't be too high. Don't be too low. Kind of be even or do your best to be as even with your emotions uh, yeah, within life. And you will see that stress and, the, you know, uh, is is less prevalent when you give your emotion to these things. Um, yeah, it's great to have really great things happening in your life. I heard the term and I, I, I believe it. Nothing is as bad as it seems. And also nothing is as good as it appears. So let's be optimistic uh, while being realistic and let us use our imagination as the spiritual tool that it is. And let us know that we come from a place of empowerment. We're the awareness behind the eyes. We are not our body. We have a body. We are not our minds. We have a mind. We are experiencing this world. 
uh, for the short amount of time that we're here. And we want to make the best of it. So let's feel good most of the time. Let's do our best to feel good most of the time. So how does this work? Well, number one, you got to understand your core self. I always say not the little me, but the big eye, that part of you that uh, is connected to the universal mind. So recognizing yourself as the I means that you are not acknowledging uh, your identity is separate from your thoughts. So you got to hear me good. So your identity is separate from your thoughts, separate from your emotions, and of course, separate from your physical existence and your physical experiences. Um, you're no longer pushed, let's say, uh, by outside forces. Instead, you stand as a stable observer. You know, you are, again, the awareness and you choose your response because it is your choice. Uh, my uh, <laughs> one of my favorite movies, if you guys have been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I'm a big Disney head and I love Pirates of the Caribbean and you know, my favorite. And it's not just exclusive to me because I'm sure everybody loves Jack Sparrow. He has a quote that says, um, the problem isn't the problem. The problem is the way that you're responding to the problem. And that really is life. The problem's never really the problem. The problem becomes how you respond to what's going on in your life. And if you can see these uh, experiences and these external circumstances as just ebbs and flows, distance from you, then you can make and you can choose a different response. Something that's going to work in your benefit, in your favor. So the understanding of the I is a powerful step in the right direction in terms of self-awareness, fostering a sense of inner control and calm. But that's only going to come through meditation. That's only going to come through, through further uh, studying and understanding the uh, awareness that you are and accepting that piece of it. Um, in doing so, we could move on to step two, which is the, the detachment from external influence or external stimuli. So as you see yourself as this larger I, you can begin to detach from the notion that external events have control over your peace. Because nothing really does except for you, your response to what's going on. So problems, disagreements, judgments from others, they lose their grip on you when you um, because you no longer define yourself as the little me. You, you can no longer be disturbed because you know you're just not your mind. You have a mind. And people do disturbing things and they say disturbing things, but you can detach from that and make a better decision on how you're going to respond, if you're going to respond, uh, because the response is really what's going to affect you and what's going to affect your life. This creates resilience overall, and you're choosing not to let external circumstances uh, interfere with your internal environment because you have the external environment, but you also have the internal environment. And I know this has probably happened to you. It's happened to me a number of times. You get up in the morning, you're really in your Zen, right? You, you've done your meditation, you've done your workout, you know, you shower, brush your teeth, and you're just really in a good place. And you go out, you know, very uh, uh, high vibrating. And, you know, you listen to Rethink podcasts and all that in the car, and you, you're feeling good. And then you get into a store or you get to your office or you get to the gas station somewhere and someone like woke up on a complete different side of the bed. And so none of that's going for them. And they may say something or do something that that um, is really off putting, you know, like maybe cutting you off in traffic, which, of course, I live in Atlanta, happens all the time or um, just not being kind. You want to get to the point where that doesn't affect you. You notice it, but it doesn't really affect you. The last thing is creating inner peace, creating inner calm as your default. That really is uh, all of our goal, just to have inner peace as a default. No matter what happens, I just always am on default mode of peace and calm. So as you practice detachment and you reaffirm the power of your larger self, that big eye, not the little me, calm becomes your default mode because you're empowered. You know that all things do work together for you. You know that no weapon formed against you is ever going to prosper. Why? Because really there's no weapon. There's only you. And so you get to choose how you feel and how you respond to things. So each time you choose not to react, 
or to let external things, external uh, stimuli bother you, um, it dictates your emotions. You are dictating your emotion. You're not allowing it to do it. Um, you're strengthening your foundation. So this larger I becomes the guide. It becomes the source. It becomes where you get it, where you're getting your calmness from, your peace, your serenity, your security, your comfort from, from. Because you just trust, you just trust that things work out for you. No matter what's going on, it can be, um, you know, career, a relationship, you know, finance, health. And, and yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, not just podcaster to listener. Okay. So I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm a human being that has to interact with other human beings. So I'm talking to you from actual experience. Have I been in a situation where my life Technically, has my life ever been in jeopardy and I had to use these principles? Um, No, no, I haven't. But I have been in really dark mental spaces, very unhappy for long periods of time. I have um, seen myself grow into a person that I'm proud to be. And these practices, I know is what got me from a certain level of consciousness to where I am now. I'm not suggesting to you I'm in some level of nirvana, but I am much better from where I was. And I know the more I practice, the more I realize the best parts of me, the highest parts of myself. So what I'm suggesting to you is you can do the same. I have more peaceful days than I used to. I have less troublesome thoughts now than I used to. It's easy for, or it can be easy for someone to get in and just kind of shake you up because, you know, a stranger on the street could say something to you. You don't really care because you don't really know them. So their in- input doesn't matter. But someone who lives in your home, very different. Someone that you're feeding and taking care of, uh, not being appreciative, this could this could bother you. Or someone you share your bed with, this could really bother you because the closer they are to you, the more powerful their words are. But still, you have the power to um, of, of how you respond. And either way, you continue to do it from the large eye. I was listening to, um, I don't even know who the person was, uh, but I was listening to a guy and part of his advice, he was, you know, like a spiritual teacher. He was doing one of these workshops. And one of the things he said, if you really want to change your life for 30 days, do this. Every time you wake up, you know, every experience that you have in your life, like slow it down, number one. So things are happening, right? Instead of seeing things from your perspective, what you're used to, your 3D, you know, your name, your sexuality, your race, who you believe yourself to be. Do it from God eye, meaning see it from awareness, see it from the perspective of the universe, see it from the perspective of source. And what happens is what you would be concerned about, source is not concerned about at all. What you would worry about, doesn't, doesn't, source is not worrying about anything. Be, well, you know, let's be true. Source, universe, God knows the whole picture. You, you don't. But if you can live more in your highest self and listen to the still small voice and let it lead you and guide you with confidence, with assurity, with faith and belief, then you have access to that knowledge. And so the calmness can come and the peace can come. So the point of doing all this today is to just kind of assist you, my, my listeners, to be able to access your Zen when you need it. Maybe you can't get to your therapist. Maybe you're out of your medication. Maybe, you know, you just can't deep breathe and meditate today. Whatever it is, maybe you can listen to this podcast, though, and it can give you some courage um, to be your best self today and to make decisions that can help you to feel better. So here are some daily practices that can help you to be in that big eye uh, most of the time. Of course, morning affirmations are are great. Start your day with identifying yourself with who you are. You're the larger I. Say to yourself, I am centered. I meaning awareness. I'm centered. 
No force outside of me has the power over my peace. No force outside of me has the power over my peace. I'm the creator of my experience. This is a great affirmation. Again, I am centered. No force outside of me has power over me. And I am the creator of my own experience. Say that to yourself every morning. The second thing is breathing. Breathing exercises, particularly conscious breathing, very healthy for you. And it can kind of help your body to regulate its chi, its energy, its divinity, help you stay healed, help you uh, uh, lessen your stress, no disease, et cetera, et cetera. Throughout the day, what you want to do is check in with yourself. Take several moments to engage in what I'm calling here conscious breathing moments. That is just if you, you know, a lot of times I'm sitting somewhere. I could be in my car. I could be at the doctor's office or at a, you know, I don't know, a meeting. And I'll notice my shoulders are just like really tight. And I'll just notice my ears are, are pulled back. You know, I'm, I'm in this tense, like almost fight, you know, type of um, stance. And that means my body is tight. And so just check in with yourself periodically. Take some deep breaths. You breathe in deeply. Hold your breath and then breathe out. This is going to allow you to calm your nervous system. This is going to allow you to have the type of um, nervous system and the calmness that you're going to need throughout the day, every day. And you can do it. You can do it no matter what's going on. This is exercise you can do. The third thing is mindful observations. So when challenges arise, and they will, or people's energy feels, you know, sort of overwhelming, maybe, you know, a lot of us don't have the... um, Option of working from home away from people, you know, zooming is kind of seeing them electronically. A lot of us have to be in the office around people and they're not the greatest of people. So sometimes people's energy is in your space. So practice observing the situation without immediate reactions when you're around people that, you know, uh, they just don't get it. They're not there yet. And and they, they could have a tendency to, you know, get on your nerves or bother you. But practice patience. Say internally, I am the observer. This creates space between you and the external influence. This allows you to approach the situation with calm. So, you know, do your best uh, to um, stay calm around people who, you know, don't necessarily always say the greatest things or make the best decisions. Daily reflection can help you as well. So in the evening, you can reflect on the moments where you felt uh, external influences that possibly could have or did disrupt your day. What did that look like? How did you respond? Um, Where did your big eye go? Where did it go? Um, This reflective practice sharpens your awareness. It, It helps you to go back and look at those situations. So if they were to ever happen again, you can stay in the big eye and not revert to the little me. So that is the daily reflection. And then lastly, gratitude for inner strength. Gratitude is always on the menu, is always a key ingredient in your success. Just be thankful for wherever you are. Um, You know, plenty of people want to have things that they don't want to have. But the truth of the matter is you currently have things that other people wish they had. Do you understand that? You're wanting what someone else has. But there are people, if you ever thought about this, there are people that are looking at you and wishing they had a husband, a marriage, a home, a kid, a car, you know, health, two legs, you know, eyes that work. There's so many things that we have to be grateful for. Let's not hyper focus on the things that could potentially upset us, the things that we want. You know, the space between where we are and where we want to be, that suffering. Let's focus on and be grateful for the things that we do have. And um, that's a great, great way to end this. So thank you guys for for listening today. I really like this podcast today. I hope it really meets you where you are. Uh, I know there are a lot of folks that are uh, discouraged of late. And I want to encourage you that, yeah. You know, things don't always look the way you think and things don't always turn out the way you want. 
But still, there's good. There's a lot of good that can come from where you are. And you've got a lot to be grateful for. So let's be grateful. Let's put out positive energy. Let's keep helping one another. Let's keep being kind to one another. And let's see our businesses grow. Let's see our relationships deepen. Let's see our health get better. Let's see our businesses grow, our our, our careers grow and flourish. That is still on, you know, on the deck. That hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. Thanks, guys. Come back again soon. And don't forget to check out the links in the podcast and support the podcast. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.